Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Another X-Class solar flare this morning. We're going to be going over that. There's other space weather news as well. We're also going to be hitting science on the major solar storm last year, teeny tiny nova events, and magneto reception in lizards. We also have the next issue of Observer Review coming out tomorrow. Let's break it all down, starting with the two notable solar events. Filament collapse via side shift, canyon of fire, and field arcades left in its wake there did not produce a significant CME. Then an X4 solar flare erupted from the northern departing sunspot group that caused the solar storms this week. Its position sent most of the plasma up and away from the Earth, but the broader, fainter plasma shockwave does appear to be extreme once again. It's nothing scary for Earth due to its position, but we could take a glancing blow off that eruption in about two or three days. It's worth noting that if that flare this morning had happened just two days earlier, it would have been facing Earth and would have been added to the storm intensity that we got the last few days. Notable also that NOAA forecasts small-scale geomagnetic storms two days from now already due to this coronal hole, which we'll also see in the image difference momentarily, its solar wind should be arriving at Earth about the same time as that glancing blow from the CME, so minor fireworks expected to kick off next week. But this week's fireworks technically aren't done yet. Confusion on social media yesterday as the bulk of the solar storm driven outages and system glitches happened along with the sentence, wait a minute, didn't the solar storm end yesterday? Well, this thing you're looking at here is the ionospheric correction, just getting back into normal today. Yes, the solar storm in Earth's magnetic field ended hours earlier, but that's not when the solar storm is done with Earth. Much of the energy does indeed come down and induce and impact areas like the surface right away, but significant energy is also stored in the upper layers that trickles down. The most dangerous times for solar storm effects is actually a tie between that peak KP index of the solar storm and when the bulk of stored energy trickles down at the same time as that first batch is discharging up from the Earth capacitor about 12 to 48 hours after the KP index drops. Looks like that risk ended last night, not two days ago when the KP index dropped. You just got a master's level lesson in space weather impact to technology. Folks, looking back to the May 2024 solar storms, it is now confirmed that the induced currents are what broke the transformer in Sweden that cut the power to Poland. They note that while the timing of the event may have been different if steps had been taken, they could not have changed the outcome, which is not shocking at such high geomagnetic latitude and with this other recent study suggesting that over a hundred of their major lines would take surges capable of destruction in a centennial event. Up next, we've got a look at dwarf nova events that do not even deserve that name. At 10 to the 31 or 32 ergs, we're talking puny nova. Now, the solar micronova event we suggest for the sun is about the same as the X1000 maximum super flare for the sun. This is still puny compared to a supernova, for example. But the nova they looked at in that paper you just saw would have to be called nano or pico nova, somewhere in that red. Tiny, tiny, tiny little star pops. Lastly, on the article front, lizards are one of the last species to have their magneto reception confirmed and understood. But that time is coming to a close with the second such paper in the last year. It's now birds, insects, mammals, plants, microbes, amphibians, and yes, reptiles too. Folks, the next issue of our e-magazine comes out tomorrow. I am going to run through some of the top stories this month. We actually have two releases every month at Observer Review, the recap of everything that mattered that month in science in the disaster cycle, and a special release on a chosen topic. This month's issue is covering exceptional science breakthroughs in solar forcing, tracking past disasters, discovering more ways the evidence and data stack up in favor of the story, and of course, the major pole shift acceleration we've endured, with the final blows staring us down from the years to come. Link to sign up is below. It is the only publication on Earth tracking the pole shift and the disaster cycle. And when you sign up, you instantly access every previous issue ever. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.